Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today's video is going to be the October 2023 kit release compilation video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the expected kit releases for the October 2023. So we have a few kits here domestically from Round 2 as well as Subby and SJR, and then a, a little smattering of uh, overseas kits from Hasegawa, Fujimi, and Aoshima. All in all, a, a relatively quiet month uh, with no, you know, no Ravel, no, uh, you know, um, big stinking new releases. A lot of these are uh, reissues of things from the past and things like that. So, uh, again, a few odds and ends out there that are interesting, but for the most part, pretty, pretty quiet. So, with that being said, let's hop right into it. Let's go over here to the photo files and get dig, dig into the domestic side of things where we are going to look start with round two, where I suppose, technically speaking, this isn't little news at all. This is rather major news. This is a brand new toolkit, as a matter of fact, and it is the release of the 125th scale, because there is a 132nd scale existing kit from Polar Lights, you might remember. This is all new tooling, 125th scale, uh, Green Hornet Black Beauty. It's going to include uh, Green Hornet and Kato figures as well. Now this is set up as a curbside. Uh, there is no engine. There is a plate chassis, if you will. Uh, but it is uh, very much optional, <laughs> so to speak, within how the kit constructs as the, the TV car, right? All of your weapons bays and things of that nature are all, uh, could be stowed or ready for, uh, like the box art with the mini rockets in the front bumper open. All of those panels open and close and function in the sense they could be open and closed after uh, construction is done in terms of how you pose the vehicle uh, on your shelf or on a contest table or wherever you decide to show it off at. Uh, there, you know, is no, of course, Chrysler, uh, Chrysler Imperial, technically, I guess it's just an Imperial back then, but there is no like, factory stock version of this hiding in there anywhere. It is very much the TV show car. I don't have any interest in it for that reason. Like, if I, I know there's no way you could do both, right? There's no way the car magically transforms between one and the other. That was a big TV show gag, obviously. They weren't even the same cars. But if you did this as a factor stock car, it might be, you know, vaguely interested in it, uh, even if it was the same sort of craftsman style, if you will, kit with no engine and uh, promo style chassis. But I know for, for, you know, fans of the old TV show, because again, we're digging old here. This isn't the car from the movie. This is the old original Green Hornet uh, car. Or people who collect and build movie cars. This is something that has been wanted for a very long time. There hasn't really been a good one of these. Uh, there was a resin one, which, you know, you shoot your shot with that. Resin can be a little iffy. Uh, one kit could be fine. The next one could be warped, could be have short shot or whatever. So, you know, having a nice plastic version of this, I, I know is something that a lot of people have wanted, and so I don't discount it for that sense. Uh, just not something that's really uh, turning my crank whatsoever. But I know for the people that are excited about it, they've been waiting a very long time for this. This was announced by round two almost a year ago, so it's finally in fruition in boxes and will be at your local hobby shop maybe by the time you watch this or shortly thereafter. So that is certainly something to look forward to. Other kits that uh, round two is uh, doing this month, you got the Dodge 1964-330 here. This is, of course, the old Lindbergh kit, getting the AMT boxing, getting it out of that Lindbergh cesspool, so to speak. Uh, not that Lindbergh uh, 90s kits were bad. Matter of fact, they are all pretty good, which is why AMT round two has been rebranding them into AMT boxes to sort of pull it out of the legacy of those old... Lindbergh days when, uh, you know, Palmer Pyro and, and things of that nature, uh, the 90s tool is pretty good. This, of course, is uh, the sister kit to the 64 uh, Plymouth, and they both have that 3D3 and slant sick engine option, so you get that again within the Dodge 330. Uh, you know, nice to have back out. It's been a little while since they've been available. I picked a couple of them up at Ollie's five or six years ago, so I don't really need a new one of these per se. I might take a look at the decal sheet when somebody picks one of these up and see if it's better than the decal sheet and the sealed one of the Lindbergh versions I have. But otherwise, yeah, not, I, it's the same kit, so I really don't need that. But I know for a lot of people, you know, it's been five, six, eight, ten years since this has been available. And, uh, you know, again, with the decal sheets that Round 2's been doing where they've been including things like gauges and the lettering for the badges and stuff like that, that this is, you know, could be worthy investment if you can catch one at a decent price. 
<coughs> trying to look on here to make sure I don't miss anything because there were a few <laughs> of these box arts I saved from one place and some other that I saved from another place. So in an MPC boxing, we're getting a reissue of the 69 Plymouth Barracuda. Been a few uh, hot minutes since this one has been out last. Pad printed uh, tires being added to this kit as well as the uh, Keystone Crager style mag wheels that were uh, introduced a few a few years ago and have uh, made their way into a few different kits. It still has all of the uh, associated parts that this kit has come with over time in terms of the uh, roll cage and racing seat belts and uh, the back seat cover racing thing. All new decals here which have a more factory uh, Barracuda set of stripes than they've been for uh, a little while. Uh, kit's been around you know since the early 1970s so you know what to sort of expect with this kit in that way but otherwise again it's been uh, as I pull up here because it's something I should have looked up the last time or uh, <laughs> you know well, before videoing but when would I do that because heck that would be like you know pfft, like professional uh, 2006 appears to be the last time it was out and uh, so that puts it into Oh, what does that work out to be? 20, oh, nearly 20 years ago. It'll be uh, 17 years ago, the last release. So, hey, it's uh, probably worthy of... Oh, wait, no, I take that back. 2016. Just reissued that way. Got a different box this time, more of a uh, modern retro box. But again, 2016, seven years since the last time it was out. Uh, you can't find it frontline in a model store anymore, I don't think. And it's certainly not in like a Hobby Lobby or anything seven years after release date. So, uh, a venerable kit. I, uh, I I don't mind it that much. So moving on to a 116th scale reissue. This is the 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air hardtop. You may recall that the, Bel the 55 Chevrolet convertible got reissued last year at some point. So this is the steel roof version of that kit you have uh, stock version custom parts there is included wiring and vinyl hoses and things like that to sort of make this a full detail kit in the sense of like full detail you know with uh, your spark plug wires and your radiator hoses being available i don't believe at least i haven't seen i haven't really dug completely into it the way i would with you know if i was going to be like 100 percent sure but i don't believe there's been a reissue of this since this kit came out in the 1970s uh, the convertible version has been reissued a couple of times, plus the most recent one, but I don't see where the Bel Air hardtop has been reissued since, again, this kit was tooled up with that convertible back in, like, 78, 79 uh, uh, vicinity. So it might be the first time this has been available in a very long time. It's certainly not been available uh, in a recognizable way since I've been in the hobby. <laughs> It's in the you know late 80s, early 90s, so it's been a while. So if it's something you're interested in, the bigger scales, that's certainly an option to look at. And then there are a couple of reissues in uh, old AMT trailers. You have the Fruhoff 40-foot exterior post van here with the Dorn uh, livery. Uh, they're, they're calling attention to the fact that it was like a branded trailer this time as far as the company is. I'm pretty sure this gives you decals also to do the tractor. Tractor not included, but it does include the decals to do the tractor. So if you wanted to find yourself a, I think that's a Freightliner attached to the front of that. It might be a Chevy Astro, but be that as may, I think it's a Freightliner. It'll give you the option to build this as, you know, getting the Freightliner kit and then putting it with this and having a unified unit if you will what a unit <laughs> but it'll be branded with dorn the way the trailer is otherwise this is the same 40 foot exterior post trailer that has been uh since again the late night middle late 1970s also in trailers re reissue of the fruhoff uh tanker trailer this is <laughs> smudged with apparently yellow lines that i put on it while i was trying to shrink the image i guess those little yellow stripes by the tires aren't on the box art. That's something I accidentally did in Photoshop and didn't realize it was still on there. Uh, but this has a golf livery attached to it, as you can see, if you stop paying attention to my Photoshop faux pay, faux pause there. And, uh, yeah, I don't necessarily know that there's a golf uh, front end for the tractor, because golf was a you know brand of gasoline oil, obviously, but even now, in this time and period in 2023, uh unless the convenience store chain owns their own uh, rigs 
uh, Sheets, if you're out here on the East Coast, they own their own tractor trailers. Um, Loves, the truck stop chain based out of Oklahoma, but that's nationwide. You may have seen their trucks. They're very, 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 very bright uh, yellow trucks. Flying J Pilot. <clears throat> Had individual companies that are merged into one other. Those two companies have merged. Again, major truck stop chain based out of Tennessee. That is, again, nationwide. You may have seen their trucks. They're red. They have, say, best coffee on the interstate in the back. <laughs> those, again, are trucking companies owned by the corporations that own the travel centers, or in case, Sheets' case, uh, you know, convenience stores. But they are not branded to the uh, gasoline. Like, there's no such thing as Sheets Gas. It's not an oil company. Um... So, Golf is an oil company, but it's not like they, even Golf, I'm sure most of you people know, I feel like I'm explaining something most people understand, and I don't want to be like pedantic and boring about it, but gas stations are branded, right? They're not owned by the owned by the oil company, they're, they're, you carry the branding. You've seen a gas station in your own neighborhood, I'm sure change from like BP to Sitco, or Sitco to Sunoco, or whatever, right? So the rigs that pull these things, the tractors, the, the actual trucks that pull the trailers, aren't owned by the oil company. So having like tractor decals here don't make any sense because the guy pulling the trailer is an independent. That's the basic point here. There's no tractor decals. <laughs> it's a really, really long-winded way to get around to that point, but you get it. And again, this, this has been out recently, uh, within the last five to seven years, but this is just a Gulf Oil livery branding to it, and so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's something that I don't, I think might have been done way, way back when this kit was new. I think there was a Gulf version of it, but again, that's something that hasn't happened since the 80s, so it's been a good 30 years plus for that. And then we go to Salvino's JR, a bunch of Camaros are what we're going to get this month, all 2023 Camaros. So the kit of the month, the one that everybody in the, the model, uh, the, the, the Safino's, uh kit club, builders club that you see them advertise all the time, they're all getting this kit. It's the Shane Van Gisbergen uh, car that was run by the star of the Australian Supercar Series that was over here for a one-off at the Chicago Street Course, and he won that race. Being that he won that race, NASCAR was very, very excited about that fact. Uh, since he's won that race, he's actually going to have a ride in NASCAR in 2024 full-time. So, I mean, hey, way to parlay one win, right? Now, he's a hugely successful driver in Australia, and it would be very interesting to see how well that tra how that translates into NASCAR, as Australian supercar has gone away from the sort of space frame weird cars and, and i know but i don't want to insult the australian people that might be out there watching going hey talking about weird cars but they were not like a spec car right the current australian supercars are a lot closer to a nascar car in a sense don't miss i don't misunderstand i know they're not the same but they're uh, a lot closer spec to a factory car than they were the past like say five to seven seasons where they were a space frame chassis with a body over top of it there are, you know, the Camaro looks a lot more like a Camaro. The Mustang looks a lot more like a Mustang. A lot of gnashing and whining of teeth, of course, in Australian supercars. The fact that they aren't Ford Falcons and things like that anymore, or Holdens, because, of course, those manufacturers were closed by Ford and GM, respectively. So they're now using American cars, if you will, underneath their their spec car. So it'll be interesting to see how that that success he has translates into NASCAR due to the fact that the cars are a little more NASCAR-ish than they were in the past. I think it's a closer step now than it would have been for somebody like in the 2000s, 2010s to try to step over and have success. We'll see if it parlays into anything, but yeah, this is what everybody's getting. Uh, it's molded in blue. There are chrome decals for the numbers. So if you're interested in that, that'll be out there, along with uh, Ross Chastain's patriotic car from the uh, Charlotte race over uh, Memorial Day weekend, the jockey uh, car. Actually, this jockey livery was run uh, at, at several races, also run at Charlotte. Uh, big American flag draped over the car, so molded in white decals do all the heavy lifting for you. Get out, bust out your setting solution for that hood decal. Then you have uh, the Chase Elliott car, the Lumar window film car that was run on Mother's Day, the throwback car from Darlington. This, of course, throws back to his father's car uh, when it was a Dodge uh, and under Everham Racing, so that's kind of cool. And then the last one is going to be this, the Kyle Busch Lucas Oil car. This car was the winning livery from the California race at the very, very beginning of the year uh, after Daytona. Again, it's molded in blue, decals do everything else, and uh, yeah, that's a winning car too, so uh, um, at least there's uh, 
Uh, of, uh, I am of the opinion, <laughs> hang on tangent time, I am of the opinion that if you're going to release a race car, you should release the winning version of races. Now, I know that that doesn't necessarily appeal to people outside the racing community, if you will, in the sense of people who build, who are very interested in the racing series, who build cars that are significant because of the performance in races. It's not like the, ooh, that's pretty, we should do that car, which is like what the jockey car would be, because Chastain won one race in 2023 and it wasn't in that livery. Um, you know, I understand the appeal of the race car flag car, but the race, I should say the American flag race car, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, but it wasn't that successful a car. Chastain didn't have that great a season. Why do, why do I, why do I want that? It doesn't, it's not significant in any way. And the rest of the modeling community who's over here, who might build one NASCAR kit this year is like, oh, look, an American flag Camaro. That's cool. And would buy that kit. I get those two things are separate. I just think that if you're going to be doing add on kits to add on kits to add on kits, they should have some sort of significance right svg's car one chicago the lucas oil car one california those two i can get behind they're cool cars anyway the lucas oil car kind of an oldie time nascar scheme svg's car very colorful gold foil, or uh, chrome foil decals in it cool those other two are like eh okay i have en i have enough I don't, I don't i don't need those for anything like hmm i hope they i mean i hope they sell them because i don't want to see SJR go out of business or anything, but I just I'm not necessarily sure I agree with the marketing. <laughs> Let's put it that way. All right, so over to Japan, we jump for the rest of this video. Uh, over at Aoshima, you're going to get two kits this month that are new or and or significant in some way. Uh, in the regular line of cars, you're going to get this uh, Nissan Gazelle Turbo Silhouette from the 1981 season. This is a real car. Uh, was an actual race car raced in 1981. Um... I really just wish that they would take the time to go back into these Group 5 Super Soul wet cars and really do the chassis up right because they're old motorized chassis. And while the, the kit will look like this when you're done with it, more or less, it's still kind of a beat your face off a wall building it, uninspiring battery box holding the dashboard in kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, I know that they, they did the one Group 5 skyline with a whole PE set that made like all of the interior parts have like metal sides and, and it looked a little bit better <laughs> for the interior but you're still dealing with that same meh chassis so I mean, it's cool if you're interested in the super silhouette series it's certainly a place to start um as it is like i said it is a real car so it's not just something that's out there and that they're throwing decals onto the other Aoshima kit this month is from the Liberty Walk series, and it is another version of the Aventador. Now, they're calling this the Aventador Limited Edition because this car was done as a limited edition car in one-to-one -one scale to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Liberty Walk. So this is like a special... Uh, like, I don't... I'm trying to think of how many of these were built in this exact color and carbon fiber frunk <laughs> specification right it's a frunk because the engine in a lamborghini is out back i actually don't think there's an there's a frunk in there because that's a huge air intake but it's the you know it's not the the hood of the car if you will um with this sort of matte silver carbon fiber frunk carbon fiber wing uh uh livery if you will the, this paint scheme they only did like I think 10 of them or so that were specifically this way as, again, a tribute to the uh, president of Liberty Walk and their 25th anniversary. I have since sold off one of my Liberty Walk Aventadors to get this one because I like this car just as it exists as, you know, the option of the one I might build out of the box to look like the box. I like this one better than the other one, so uh, you probably don't care, but that's the reason why. <laughs> If you see me doing a video where I get that one and you're like, doesn't he already have like two of those? No, I have one of those. That'll make two of those. We'll move over to Fujimi next. So they have a few things out this month. Um, a couple of these are going to not have box art attached to them still because they're just at this point isn't and I can't hold this video any longer. So those two releases are a GX61 Toyota Cresta. It's a line art, right? It's the a vague thing. I don't know much about this kit in terms of what it's going to include, other than it probably is going to be the same GX61 Cresta that it always is, meaning it's going to have the new chassis that allows you to pose the wheels all up and down and, and cambered and all that stuff, that new easy directional system, whatever they call it. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's an $11 model kit, basically, that it always is. Um, it's a fairly good representation of a Cresta in terms of body dimensions, but otherwise it's 
a plate chassis. It's motorized. It's very, you're building the interior up off the floor kind of thing. So, you know, it is what it is there. And then the other one is this. Uh, it's a reissue of their Fujimi, of their Fujimi. Well, of course, Fujimi's reissuing a Fujimi kit. Who would have thought? It's their reissue of the Nissan Skyline R32 Group A car. This is the Team Tyson car in a, a 1992 livery. Now, Shunko has done this decal set recently, but no one, I, I believe, I mean, Fujimi may have back in the very early 1990s when this kit was new, but in terms of recently, nobody has done this decal scheme, because instead of this being like a black and red car with sort of an Advan livery on it, this is a black, or a, yeah, a black car with like, s the stripes are red and silver, so it's a little alternating the way the, the, the uh, livery would normally look like on this car. They ran this car the, that way the entirety of the 1992 season. But uh, if you don't want to buy a Shunko decal set and then do the two-toning yourself, this would be an option for the decals. Kit is reasonably good. It was tooled up uh, in the... Or not so much tooled up, modified in the mid-2000s. So it has a more modern chassis underneath and a decent interior where it's a platform interior not you're not building it off the top of the chassis pan or anything else like that body pretty proportional it's not as good a body as the tamiya kit or the fujimi kit or the uh, hasagawa kit rather the new uh, tool hasagawa kit obviously but uh you know it's serviceable certainly for what it is and it's a it's a unique scheme in the sense that other than back in the 19 early 1990s probably 93 the year after this car ran would have been the last time it was issued in these decal schemes it's a decal scheme you haven't seen right a lot of the new hasagawa kits have come out they did the tyson car from 93 which has the final version of this livery um you know, decals have existed from Studio 27 for the 91 car that looks like the 93 car, but it's a little different in terms of, you know, odds and ends and associate sponsorships. For some reason, everybody skipped this car. I think it's because of the silver decals. Doing silver decals require screen printing. Otherwise, you end up with metallic grayish looking decals. So, anyway, that is coming out if you're interested in it. And then, stuff I have box art for, uh, a reissue of that same Toyota Cresta, but this is in a body uh kit boxing <laughs> same kit actually i think the other one might be a uh a mark ii but they're all, they all look the same they just have like different versions of, of the front and rear trim this has obviously a whole heck of a lot of arrow going on and the best part is there's another set of fenders in here that look like the tops of trash cans uh, and I don't mean like the roundy round metal kind. I mean the big square bins that everyone uses. They are gigantic rectangular <laughs> wheel well openings. I wish I had a photo of them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of add-ons going on with this in terms of the body kit that comes with it. Like the that rear wing has two stages to it. There's like a lower one and then that big whale tail that's on the box art going on there. But the kit itself is pretty mediocre. It's another $11 model kit. It's another motorized uh, chassis. Literally, the battery box would sit underneath the hood in this case and literally holds the dashboard in. It's not a lot going on there. Understand that if you buy one of these, you're, bu you're building it for what it looks like when it's done. Not the experience of the building and not certainly not the quality of the kit itself. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's, it's certainly in there as a option for somebody who wants to build a borderline bozo style uh toyota cresta so cool in that sense i guess and then they released two kits from a comic book a mag uh, a manga my magna <laughs> a manga this is one i've never heard of before but then again i don't live in japan and i'm not familiar with their comic book series very much but this new series or these new series of kits i should say are from a comic uh manga called naniwa Toimare. Apologies if that is completely uh, pronounced incorrectly. It might be uh, Naniwa. Naniwa? I think it's Naniwa. Naniwa Tomomare. Anyway, uh, it's a whole comic book based around a race team called the Treason Race Team. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be T-Reason <laughs> or if it literally is Treason and that just is one of those things that maybe doesn't translate in English the same way as it would in, in Japan, because why would you want to call yourself Team Treason? <laughs> hey, look! <laughs> Team Trump. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, there are two <laughs> releases to this. Uh, one is a Nissan Silvia S13. Uh, this has... This kit was sold up in the, in the 
late 90s, early 2000s, so it's a more modern kit in the sense of the build experience, right? It's a it's more palatable uh, than a lot of Fujimi kits would be. And in that sense, uh, you get the decals to do uh, the car as it exists. There's not a lot of decals to it in the sense of like the, the overall is like some pinstripes and some uh, license plates that are specific to this, to this comic book series and things like that. Uh, otherwise, it's a just a pretty uh, run-of-the-mill uh, S13. It does have some seatbelt material, and I use air quotes because it's not really ribbon. It's the same sort of uh, weird poly plastic stuff that Hasegawa uses in some of their rally kits where you could use it as seatbelt material, but it's not really very pliable or, you know, effective in that. I mean, it's something <laughs> other than not having anything, but it is there. And the other version, and that is for uh, the Gutsun specification, the, I guess he's sort of the hero of the, uh, of the comic, and then you have an A86 Truno, and this is the Mabo edition, same uh, comic strip, or same comic book series, obviously. And this does come with the decals to do the overall top green part of the car, so you, you don't have to two tone this necessarily. It does come with the the hood, uh, trunk, and side green parts, and it has decals again to do the license plate specific to this vehicle and the Team Treason <laughs> logos as well. Uh, this one's a little older. It's the, their, their Trunos, their 8086s were from the 1980s when this car was new, and they are way more ba basic chassis. Uh, this still carries like the, the mechanical carriage to hold the, the, the electric engine as being part of the rear suspension uh, buildup. You do build this uh, interior off the floor or off the top of the chassis pan, if you will. And, you know, it is what it is. It's not necessarily going to, like, be the worst thing you've ever done. But it, know that, again, it's a fairly basic kit. This These kits are running, like, 18 bucks, And that's because of licensing from this comic book, more than likely. Otherwise, these would be, like, $11, $12 model kits. So, I mean, it's there. It's something. Uh, it's, it's a new series. I don't know how much deeper they plan to go into it. As it stands right now, there aren't any more of these. Uh at least through the end of the year, so we'll see if this continues, or if that's just sort of where it is. It's the two hero, the hero, the anti-hero's car, and off we go on to something else. We shall see. Over to Hasegawa, we've got a bunch of reissues over here, and there are some uh, pretty, well, not spectacular, if you will, reissues. So let's go through them real quick here. you got a Kremer Porsche 962C from the 1988 Monza World Sports Car Prototype Series car. This car finished sixth, so... Eh, okay. It's a Yokohama livery. It's a livery that I don't believe has been done uh, with commercial decals before. There might have been a set of, you know, home print decals floating around for it, but as far as commercial screen prints, I don't think there was. Very handy set of decals so you know which way the front of the car is and which way the car is supposed to go on the racetrack. If you're ever confused, just look out. You look to your left, look to your right, look over the dashboard, and you're like, oh, go that way. So... <laughs> It's the same kit as it always is, 50, 60 parts, whatever. No, no, uh, you know, rotors on the brake, or no brake rotors on the, uh, or no brake calipers, I should say, on the rotors. There's always sort of a weird thing that has brakes, but no way to actually grip those brakes to stop. And that is a Group C Hasegawa problem across a bunch of their kits, so it's not just a knock on the 962C. But, yeah, you know, if you're into these kits, I know I have one friend who's very into, into his 962Cs, and I have plenty of them as well, so I can't, like, point fingers, but it's another option uh, within those kits. Reissue of the Honda Civic VTI ETI in the EG6 uh, hatch version. This has been reissued uh, within the last, I want to say, 10 years or so, but this is the blue version. Yes, it's molded in metallic blue. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh. I'm building one of these EG6s as a race car right now. It is probably one of the more frustrating things I've had to deal with uh, in terms of kit choices because it looks okay, but man, has it got a lot of flash to it. And uh, it's very defeating in that way. Like, I wanted to progress with it, but every single time I get a part out, I'm having to spend 15, 20 minutes cleaning the part up enough to make it look like the part it's supposed to look like rather than an overshot, uh, <laughs> flash ridden nonsense. Uh, you're gonna get a reissue, and I, and I know this is just a line art for this, but it is the Honda N360. It is the 1960, I think there's 67 or 68, which is the year for these. Um, this is the Overfender option version. I wish I had better box art, but this is literally the only thing Hasegawa's provided. And it basically has the Overfenders and some of the racing parts out of the 
uh, uh, little homebrew racing versions of this they've done. There's a racing version one, racing version two, where they added some over fenders and some speed parts to it. These cars were never formally in any racing series, so it's sort of uh, SCCA wannabe cars, if you will. And so they're taking some of those parts out of those race cars and throwing them into a street car, and it's like, haha, new model kit. Then you have uh, Toyota Starlet reissue. This is the EP71 SI Limited middle version, red color. So there's already been a middle version of this kit. This is just molded in red. So hey, new model kit. <laughs> uh, reissue of the Mazda Savannah RX-7 SA 22C race car version. So this is a 1979 Portland car. So IMSA GT series obviously is not just the 24 hours of Daytona. It is a... Well, depending on a given year and a given time period, it was somewhere between like a six race and a 12 race uh, racing series. This is the uh, Portland, I think it was the third or fourth race that season. And this car finished second in the Portland car. It is pretty much the 24 hours of Daytona car, just with uh, a little bit of adjustment to the sponsorships, as well as only be having one driver as the Portland was a sprint race rather than an endurance race. If you looked at the box art there, there was a big sort of blank rectangle, outline rectangle on the door. That was where your Winston logo should go, because that was who was sponsoring this back in the day. Or, excuse me, Camel was sponsoring this back in the day. And, of course, you can't have tobacco livery, so you literally just get a rectangle outlining the area on the door where your tobacco livery should be, but isn't. So, <laughs> there's that. Um, I've, as far as I know, no one has made a little sheet of fill-in decals for this. Maybe something I have to talk to Ray J decals about. They love doing fill-in decals for these Hasegawa cars. For the tobacco stuff, they could do a decal sheet with like six of them on there. That would be enough to do like three cars. That would cover this car, the 24 hour, and the two 24 hours of Daytona cars that they did last year. That might be an option. Might be something to do after this video. But anyway, this is that's available. And then lastly, we got another reissue of the Eggplant Girls, uh, big decorated uh, Volkswagen van things. This is the the Volkswagen panel van for the 2023 Halloween version of this. It is, as I've often heard, the Hasegawa divorce vehicles, because <laughs> you know. You put that van out on your uh, display uh, table. Some females in your house might ask you exactly what it was you planned to be doing uh, later on in the afternoon, as these girls certainly have some very unique Halloween costumes. There's a whole bunch of these, if you haven't noticed. If you, if you, I, I couldn't tell you what uh, specifically they're attached to. Usually they're not attached to, ho uh, to hol holidays like this, especially not a holiday that would be considered to sort of be American. Um, you know, it's the whole thing that's everything on this is in English. It's all trick-or-treat and, um, you know, sure. <laughs> the Tamago Girls at it again kind of thing. I don't mind the, the, the colors, like the blue over the orange is kind of cool in the sense of just something to golf livery, <laughs> if you will. But yeah, that's really pushing the boundaries of what's going to be uh, cool <laughs> in your house. <laughs> Maybe on certain contest tables that might not be approved either. That might be a little too scantily clad for the IPMS and their uh, their rules on scantily clad figures. But be that as it may, that is coming back out. That kit itself is not a bad model kit. It's not a full detail kit. It's a curbside. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to deal with the every panel on the whole house opens thing that the, the Revolve Germany kit deals with, it's certainly a, a much a better option for that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to leave with that being the last because it is such a such a interesting choice of a model kit. Oh, I didn't expect to laugh that hard about it. Anyway, guys, that wraps up this video. Now you know what you're buying for this month, and we'll see you guys on the other side.